Hi, it's Greg. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a mini lecture. I'm just going to reemphasize some points that you've read in the book, assuming you've read the book, uh, and that have come out in uh, in my comments, etc., and in some of the earlier videos. Uh, I'm also going to tell you what's in the assignment. Uh, uh, next assignment. Okay, sitcom writing is hard work. I guess everyone can see that. Um, it's very craft oriented. I'm reading off a screen, so I apologize. I'm no great actor. It's very craft oriented, very dependent on how well you know the show you're writing for. Uh, almost all sitcom writers start as staff writers on someone else's show. So you generally have to show you can write on someone else's show uh, and maintain their characters and their types of stories long before you would ever get a chance to write your own. Uh, and sitcom writers do much of what they do in a room with other writers, except when they might go off to write uh, the first draft of their own script, there's a lot of punching up in the room and criticizing in the room. Um, and in the room, every line and every joke is going to get argued over and rewritten and sharpened over and over. Okay, that's why I focus on every line because that's the way the craft works. That's the way comedy works, especially in this relatively short form of a half an hour or less on screen. But the hardest thing about taking this course online isn't just simulating that, it's that students can't read their work out loud in class uh, and see listeners react to it, uh, which is exactly what happens if we were to have this cl uh, class in person. Uh, and frankly, there's a lot of nuance that goes into the, the discussion of comedy writing that is very hard for me to transmit this way. Um, uh, that's just reality, and it's hard to transmit, in, especially hard in an email or discussion group. Uh, to write it down if you can't hear my voice. Um, same thing goes for answering general student questions. In-person discussions are the best way. That's why I hosted a Zoom conference last week to answer your questions. If you didn't RSVP, then I assume you're comfortable with your work. If you want to have another Zoom conference, please tell me. I'll schedule one and try to get other students involved. I don't think I can compel anyone to, to attend one because that's not something that you bargained for uh, when you signed up for the class but I want to make them available to you anyways. Most of you totally understand at this point the format, uh, and you're trying to write scenes that have the basics, and most of you are doing that. Conflict, tension, stakes, what happens next. If you're not going through these when you get to the bottom of page two and asking yourself if you've written them, you're, you're doing something wrong, that you must go through those, those, uh, those items. Conflict, tension, stakes, what happens next. Oh, and characters who say and do things that are uniquely them and within the tone of the show. I put that in a lot of comments, and I've, I've mentioned this before. It's very important. If you have trouble knowing what a character would do, a particular character, whether it's Jay or Gloria or someone else, watch the show or find more episodes to read. There are more scripts available free online. Uh, I would get the PDF if you can. They're easy to find. Okay, when you're writing a scene, ask yourself, would this character say these lines? Does it sound like something he or she would say? Would she say or do this? If not, don't write it. See the differences between the characters. Very important to be perceptive. Mitch and Cam are both gay. However, one grew up rural, one did not. One loves football, one does not. One is extroverted and more open-hearted. The other is kind of uptight. Uh, and and keeps everything sort of uh, uh, tightly inside. Notice the difference between these two characters. They aren't interchangeable. Okay, if you're throwing uh, them a line and not caring who gets it, you know, and they're both contributing as if they're this, you know, t the two same people in the story, then you're not gathering that they have been. They have very specifically been written differently to accentuate very clear traits and differences in their in their personalities. Okay, you want to you want to catch on to that and make use of it. Okay, as for the comedy and the jokes, that takes time. But remember, every line you write should either move. And I'm going to throw this out there in case I haven't said it completely uh, or written it completely. I've written this in some comments for people. Anything you write in these scripts either a moves the story forward, b gives needed emphasis on needed information, or c tries to make the reader audience member laugh. So avoid writing prompting lines. Don't have characters say, what, huh, what'd you say? Um, you don't mean that, do you? Things like that, because you're just prompting another character to say the same thing over and over again, and taking longer to get to the, the, the character's uh, reveal or, uh, or statement or whatever, ha what have you, so we can keep the story moving. You're going to have to keep generating story. 
Okay, those things, what I call prompting lines, waste time and don't make the scene better. They drag it down, so I want you to avoid them. And remember, raise the stakes. Two characters arguing about what to make for dinner isn't interesting until there's more at stake. Maybe one character needs to feel like a good cook because he lost his job. He needs to be good at something. You know, or maybe another character needs to cook steak tonight because their guest is a vegetarian and secretly she wants him to have a bad time uh, for some secret reason that we learn during the scene or perhaps even in the next scene. Uh, we'll do another scenic assignment for this, this next assignment. Uh, we're going to write a two-page scene, two pages exactly, as always, okay? And that means you don't need to write end of scene at the end or anything like that. You just get to the end, okay? But this, the end, the bottom of the second page. But this time you're writing an outline for a three-story scene as well. Here's how you do it. Okay, you're going to tell me in two sentences or less what happens in scene one. Then you're going to write scene two. Then you're going to tell me in two sentences or less what happens in scene three. So you're going to be sending me a two-page scene that's all by itself, a two-page scene, and another document. You're going to send me two documents. Another document that's going to say scene one, these things happen. No more than two sentences. Very, very, very brief. And scene three, these two things happen. So to be clear, you're writing a description of scene one, and you're writing all of scene two as an actual scene with characters and drama and comedy, and then you're writing a little short description of scene three. Okay, I want to see how you're able to put a scene within a larger story, which is what's happened in all the episodes we've read. Right? There's always a series of scenes, uh, that make up a story. There's always gap between the scenes. Okay, again, make sure there's gaps in time between the scenes. That means you don't have a scene that goes until 6 o'clock and then start the next scene at 6.05. It could just be the same scene without the cut, without something happening offstage in between. Uh, gaps in which something happens that we can learn about is what you want when the, scene, when the next scene starts. So if you have a scene one in which you say, you know, Cam and Mitch are going to argue about or discuss going to... Uh, the grocery store, and then in, and you leave it open as to what they decided to do, then scene two, which you will fully write, might be in the grocery store. It will, because you said it in the grocery store, I will know that between one and two, they decided to go to the grocery store. I won't need to see them make the decision. Does that make sense? That's what gapping is for. It's part of the storytelling. The part that you don't show between scenes is part of the storytelling. Uh, so this requires you to sit and think before you write, because if you just jump into a two-page scene, you may not know what came before, you may not be able to construct that later, and what came afterwards. Uh, so you're creating a three-scene story, you're only going to write the second scene, as I said. The first and third scenes, you're just going to briefly, two sentences or less, really, describe. Okay? Um, and when you write that second scene, don't use prompting lines. Please don't. Um, push the story forward. Remember, you're either pushing the story forward when you're writing, you're giving needed, really needed information, or you're cracking a joke, making a joke, okay, that you hope that we'll laugh at. Um, I don't care so much whether I laugh at it, I just like to know that you're trying to make me laugh, I'm trying to make the reader laugh. That's the important thing. Uh, when I read the scenes, oh, I, I said I mentioned that, sorry. Um, if you have questions, as always, email me directly at depaulg at newschool.edu. As always, as I've said before, please submit assignments directly to depaulg at newschool.edu. Um, when you submit, just to be really clear, you're going to send two documents. One is going to have your second scene, scene two, which you will have. It'll be two full pages of scene, as you've done many times before. The other document will give me a little, very brief summation of scene one and scene three. When I read them, I'll look at the second document first. I'll read the couple of lines for scene one. I'll go back and read the entire scene two. And then I'll read the very short ending scene. And I'll ask myself, how does this story work? And I'll send you comments based upon what you have sent me. Um, this is going to take a little longer, I think, because you've got to fit it into within, you know, you're fitting together three parts, even though you're not writing one and three, more than a sentence of description. You're only writing one scene. This is the middle scene. But again, you're jockeying a couple of things here. So uh, we'll make this a 10-day assignment due November 8th, end of the day, November 8th. Um, that's about all I'm going to say. Uh, you may want to watch this twice and, and take notes as you would in a class. Uh, it's almost 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop this video. Okay? Thank you so much.